There is a further intensification of the crises that we are seeing today globally, and I want to bring you the information that I believe is pertinent to you. So I'm going to break it down. The first thing we need to look at is the cuts and rises. This will bring us into the second piece, which is the Lebanon turmoil. And I have to show you that first before we can get into what's happening in Lebanon. I covered this in the live session that I did as well. If you were there, thank you for being there. And the third thing, I want to look at is the wealth evaporation. What's happening here is that the middle class is simply disappearing. And in the next crisis, that's going to be taken to the next level. I've got so much to cover. Let's go. This article right here is so in-depth. It gets into every issue related to the supply chains, inflation, the energy crisis, and so on. If you want to check it out in depth, then I would recommend going to the links. There's sources right there and you can check it out. But I just want to bring this to you right now as an introduction because it's going to give us the information we need to know for the rest of the video. Energy is so hard to come by right now that some provinces in China are rationing electricity. Europeans are paying sky high prices for liquefied natural gas. Power plants in India are on the verge of running out of coal. And the average price of a gallon of regular gasoline in the United States was at 325 up from 172 a few months ago. This is key to understand because that puts pressure on you, the individual, right? They do talk about what is happening right now, unusually cold winter in Europe, hurricanes that forced shutdowns of the Gulf oil refineries, a term for the worse in relations between China and Australia, looking at a protracted calm spell over the North Sea that shut down the wind power generations, like all these different things, one market to another has led us to where we are today. It's not one single event. So remember that, okay? There's multi-level here, different angles coming at us. And so we need to keep that stuff in mind. But let me just switch gears for a minute. And we're going to get into what's happening with the cuts and the rises. I just want to show you that first and move into this because it is important to understand what's happening on all levels. Central bankers are spooked by signs that inflation is lingering for longer. So you could look at the energy crisis and see the inflation. Okay, it's there. But you can point that to something happening with wind power or there's not enough sun for the solar and so on. I get it. But underlying all of this is what the central banks are doing. And they are never going to point out, especially the Federal Reserve, never going to point out the fact that their quantitative easing, their money printing, creates a devaluation of the currency, which can send asset prices up, which can create dislocations and distortions. Of course, when you have interest rates at rock bottom, all kinds of messed up things occur. So this just shows you the chart, the Bloomberg Central Bank Outlook, what's set to happen with interest rates by the end of 2022. Nobody knows for sure, but this is based on you know their dot plots like the Federal Reserve has, the forward guidance and so on. So the Federal Reserve supposedly will leave theirs unchanged, but you'll get hikes in places like Canada, Brazil and South Africa and you know New Zealand and so on. All of these countries here have been taking action throughout last year, this year. If you see it already in this particular cycle, there have been over 50 rate increases. But you don't hear about that too often, do you? Because we hear about the Federal Reserve. And that is obviously the head of the snake. But going in a level deeper, we start to understand what's happening here. There's a big difference. Big, big difference. But look at what the Bank of England had to say. A Bank of England policymaker said that markets are right to price in an earlier interest rate hike than previously expected as inflation accelerates. Okay, I think it's appropriate that the markets have moved to pricing a significantly earlier path of tightening than they did previously. Who has done this? Look at what is it, New Zealand, a whole bunch of different countries that, I, that I've shown you recently have started to increase interest rates and specifically citing the fact that hey we've got way too hot inflation and we need to calm it down 
I think that's key. It's really, really key. Okay. Um, this is just one example of, of that. And we'll see that they wanted this particular individual wants to, as they say right here, uh, voted last month to end the Bank of England's bond buying program immediately. You see that? We've got inflation. Let's stop with this money printing. They are correlating. This central banker is correlating the two. But you never hear of that, do you? Diesel stockpiles are at a 20-year low as the U.S. heads into winter. Current stockpile covers only 31 days of distillate demand, costs set to rise for heating truckers and farmers. What do you think that does? Seasonality, U.S. heating oil days worth of supply. Comparing, it might be a little hard to tell there is an arrow there. But essentially, the line right now down a lot further than in previous years. This goes back from 2000 up into the present. Not a good sign, right? So you add all of this together and you get into an issue that quite frankly is going to be unfortunate for a lot of people. The prices are going to rise. You are going to have to pay more for your electricity. You're going to have to pay more for your food. Inflation is there and underlying all of that is the central banking activity that even the Bank of England officials are admitting. Now, there's another level to this, and it's more direct, it's more obvious. I want to talk about this in the Money GPS Insights. Problems are compounding and speculation is picking up. You are seeing the commodities traders and so on boosting prices like we have never seen before. Lebanon is an extreme example of multiple crises taking place at once. Let it be known, inflation is unstoppable. Their actions will always lead to worsening effects. I know so many people out there every day for breakfast, they're having their oatmeal, they're having their porridge. Well, take a look. Tiny North American oat crop could be coming for your breakfast. The smallest harvest ever in the U.S. is expected to shrink supplies needed for everything from Cheerios to oat milk. Cheerios and oat milk, um, you know, that's going to take a hit, obviously, if the prices are ridiculously higher than they were. And the quote here from Oat Information, uh, the president actually of that, saying, you can't make a Cheerio out of barley. And that's just something. That's with other commodities too. You know, when lumber prices started to surge, they said, you know what? Maybe we should be using a type of metal. Why not use metal instead of this? Why are we building it this way? Let's seek, you know, alternatives. But then they realized that all that stuff is going up as well. So you can't necessarily just replace one thing with another when everything is going up. What do you think about that? Well, if you want to support the channel, give it a thumbs up. Support me in the information that I'm bringing you today. You don't want the king here to give that thumbs down. But of course, if you want to give a thumbs down, please do. Let's talk about Lebanon. Lebanon could run out of electricity within a week. Power cuts across Lebanon concurrently last up to 23 hours a day. But state power company warns that fuel shortages could plunge the country into total darkness. Okay, so this is really key. It doesn't give me an exact uh, date. There it is. September 23rd, actually. And you go back September, they were warning about that. You fast forward to today, you've got problems. Look, they were warning about it. They're saying already we've got problems. And then we further intensify. I think I have that one next. Lebanon's electrical grid has shut down across the country, meaning residents are now entirely dependent on costly private generators for power if they can afford it. Now, I had somebody on my live video talking about this, saying that, you know, while the government itself may not be able to provide the power, uh, the more regional sections are doing so, but, you know, there are people, many, many people without power. And this is crazy because, 
you know, the, so many people are affected. It's not just, you know, little spots here and there. Most of Lebanon loses electricity after power stations run out of fuel. They get into more of that details if you're interested, but look at these facts. Lebanon has been plunged into total darkness as 6 million people were left without energy as power stations run out of fuel. The Mediterranean country is battling one of the planet's worst economic crunches since the 1850s in the wake of the last year's devastating blast that leveled a huge part of the capital, Beirut. So you remember that, I'm sure. And what happened here? Currency crisis. You've got inflation problems. Capital controls, I'm sure, are taking place as well. Banking problems. I mean, economic issues. Every single thing is going on. This is one extreme example. Look at what's going on with Venezuela. Look at what's going on with Greece back in 2012. Look at what happened in Cyprus. Look at what happened previously in the 90s to Mexico. Look at what's going on. Just example after example. Do the countries, can they grow out of that? It might take decades. It might take centuries in some cases. Yes, but the individuals, the middle class, often gets wiped out. It takes a very long time, potentially even generations, to pick themselves up out of that. But there are always some people able to you know, find their way uh, to bigger, uh, bigger and better situations, prosperity, and so on. But it's always a small group. Forget Russian intentions. Fundamentals drove up Europe's gas price. This is from Kemp, who I show you from Reuters, who gives you a lot of good detail and the charts are fantastic. I don't have time to get into it today. But if you want to know about this, because I know some people were talking about it, I'm including it in the sources as always. So definitely check it out. Fast moves in rates freak people out, according to RBC. Value trade has an expiration date. Earnings really don't matter for small caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what is important here is to understand that what the central, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. Uh, there, there's an interview essentially that they kind of summarize. But what I wanted to show you was the reason I, I put this here is that what where we're going, okay, don't worry, we're going to increase interest rates in 2023. We heard that before from the Fed. But by the time we get to 2023, what's inflation going to be at? I mean, that is unreasonable. They tell you 2023 because they don't want to spook anybody. They don't want to spook investors. They don't want to sell off in the markets. They don't want chaos in the streets. So they tell you it's coming, but it's a long, long way down. But if it was realistic, where would inflation be at? It would be incredible. It would be ridiculous. All right. Take a look. Stock investors fret supply chain woes could knock on earnings. Could it be? <laughs> Chip shortages behind $210 billion in lost sales for car makers. They give you some examples. Deckers, Skechers, Adidas exposed to possible Vietnam woes. The problems that we have today, it's not just China. Okay, It goes into every country. Every country. And this is a fact. You know that. We are dealing with this on so many different levels. Nobody wants to talk about the underlying problems. I certainly will. The supply chain problems are going to stay, leading to substantially higher prices and major dislocations in parts of markets no one is expecting. All, Almost all segments of the economy that are not pure service or pure technology driven will be struggling with supply chain issues for a long time. Now remember, key intel there, pure service. So if you're an individual that, I don't know, needs to fix cars, you're still probably going to be in need, right? Because if the car breaks down, people need to fix it. But what happens to the parts? That could be an issue too, right? Pure technology, all online, all internet-based. This is why I have a free e-course to teach people about how to sell stuff on Amazon. Same situation though. Stuff is coming in from overseas, You've got problems too, right? Supply chain. Okay, look at this. Year in the red. Drawdowns have worsened for global retailers as year progresses. This is the MSCI, all country, world retailing index. Doesn't look good. I mean, it's been up and down, but it depends on the reopening. Is it reopening? Are we closing? Are there restrictions? Are the lockdowns? And so on. But 
so far, not very good. This is talking about memory for computers. All right, taking a look at this more recently, why is this down? Why are, you know, they're, they're talking about coming off the, the recent highs. I think they've got problems with the components themselves. But there's also issues here with trying to get everything together. This is just one component of many. But I guess that's besides the point. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Percentage of wealth held by the top 1% versus the middle 60%. And can you believe it? The top 1% hold more wealth than the middle 60%. Incredible. From that 20 to the 80%, they now own more. The middle class is gone. My friends, the middle class is gone. It's only going to get worse. And then this, because I love to always include information about robotics, automation, how to move more goods through America's clogged infrastructure, robot trains. That's what they're saying anyway, is a Wall Street Journal article. Self-driving trains could be greener, carry more stuff, and help unclog America's congested supply chains and making them a reality will likely be far easier than perfecting autonomous vehicles. That part I do agree with. It's on the track. They can you know, use cameras. They can do whatever they need. Unlike in the middle of the road where you know you still see cars crashing all over the place but the point is they are going for the robotics and automation they're doing this in every industry not just in transportation but they're really pushing for it in transportation you could see that big time big time all right if you're not already you've got to be an insider that's my way to get to you directly Okay, this is five days a week. I email you the video of the day, okay? You can get it right here at this card or at themoneygps.com. And if you haven't already, don't forget to click that like button. It's right down here to support the channel. If you haven't seen this video, you got to check it out. There's so much detail in here. Click it and I'll see you there.